people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India has reaffirmed its commitment to the Pacific Islands with a significant move towards development cooperation. External Affairs Minister S. Deshankar announced the signing of a memorandum of understanding to support four community projects in the Marshall Islands. These projects, ranging from a community sports centre to essential infrastructure like an airport terminal underscore India's growing role in enhancing bilateral ties and fostering regional development in the Pacific. Our report. India's External Affairs Minister S. Jashankar unveiled the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding to finance four community development projects in the Marshall Islands. The Marshall Islands consist of an extensive group of volcanic islands and coral atolls situated in the Central Pacific Ocean, positioned between Hawaii and the Philippines. The Memorandum of Understanding was signed at the Indian Embassy in Tokyo by India's Ambassador to Japan. Addressing the ceremony, Jashankar emphasized the enduring partnership between India and the Marshall Islands, underscoring the deepening bilateral relations facilitated by the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation. The MOU signifies a significant milestone in strengthening bilateral relationship between India and the Marshall Islands within the FIPIC framework. India's pledge to advance critical infrastructure projects in the Marshall Islands represents a pivotal effort in bolstering bilateral ties and promoting regional development. This initiative underscores India's expanding influence in the Pacific region. We consider it our responsibility to support the Pacific Islands in the quest for sustainable development. Climate change, natural disasters, poverty alleviation and health care are common challenges that we need to address together. And India is privileged to be a partner of the Pacific Islands in that regard. We believe that today's MOU will enable the implementation of four community development projects. I'm glad that these projects cover areas including a community sports center in Ailu Katol, airport terminal on Mejit Island, community centers at the Arno and Bothie Atolls. India's involvement in the Marshall Islands is integral to its wider strategy of enhancing relations with Pacific Island nations. This effort is in line with India's Act East policy, which focuses on strengthening economic and strategic partnerships across the Asia-Pacific region. India recognizes the priorities and the needs of the Pacific Island nations, healthcare and related infrastructure, quality and affordable medicines, wellness and lifestyle, centers of excellence, education and capacity building, development of SME sector, renewable energy and clean water facilities. All these are some of the focus areas of our cooperation. India is always ready to do more with our Indo-Pacific partners. India was one of the first countries to establish diplomatic relations with the Republic of Marshall Islands in April 1995. India and the Republic of Marshall Islands share warm bilateral relations encompassing a wide range of areas including blue economy, climate change, disaster preparedness, health, education and renewable energy. India's relations with the Marshall Islands are covered from Japan with the Indian ambassador to Japan being concurrently accredited to Marshall Islands. 
Since 2005, India has provided more than 1.8 million US dollars as assistance to Republic of Marshall Islands for various projects relating to purchase of equipment, disaster relief, national export strategy, community and local government projects, harnessing solar energy, water and sanitation among others. Moving on. Protesters in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir are demanding urgent action from authorities. They are calling for the widening of a crucial road citing severe traffic congestion and deteriorating conditions. They claim these issues are not just inconveniences but have led to accidents especially affecting children commuting to school. Moreover, concerns extend to environmental damage caused by heavy traffic and unauthorized hill cutting, violating regulations and posing health risk. A report. A protest took place in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir, demanding the widening of the Shaheed Kali to Gadi Habibullah Road. Protesters highlighted severe traffic congestion, deteriorating road conditions and health issues caused by the road's narrowness. Children struggle to commute to school due to frequent traffic jams which have led to several accidents. Manzoor Ali Shah and other speakers warned the government that without immediate action, a larger protest movement with widespread support would be mobilized. और दीगर तुम्हारे आराम से भी उठाया, सियासी क्यादत से भी उठाया, लेकिन इस मामले को मतलब इस पाल नहीं किया गया, जिस तरह बाकी मामलात रियासत के अंदर चलते हैं, इसी तरह इसको भी रद्दी की टॉपली में बैंक दिया गया, तो मजबूरन हमने कोशिश की है कि ये थोड़ा सा हमने अधिकार किया है, इसमें बच लेकिन ये खामोश हैं। तो आज हम ये कोशिश कर रहे हैं ताकि गुमत के वालों तक ये हमारी बात पहुंचे। Protesters voiced concerns that heavy traffic has severely damaged the sewage system and road infrastructure. They recommended halting heavy traffic to prevent further deterioration and potential risks. Additionally, they noted that some individuals are using machinery to cut into hills or mountains violating Supreme Court guidelines. This activity pollutes the environment and poses health risks by disrupting natural habitats and ecosystems. और इसके ऊपर जो हैवी ट्रैफिक चलती है जिसकी वजह से बारह इसकी सेवरेज भी तबाह हो गई है और रोड भी तबाह हो गई है इस हैवी ट्रैफिक को बंद किया जाए और सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने जो एकामात दिए हुए हैं वो ये है कि ये जो श्वाई नाला यहाँ से सिर्फ लूज मटेरियल को उठाया जाए लेकिन कुछ लोग जो हैं affects disaster preparedness and response. In a region prone to earthquakes and landslides, robust infrastructure is crucial for effective evacuation and relief efforts. However, inadequate infrastructure and poor roads complicate emergency response, increasing community vulnerability during crisis. Let's now move to Nepal, where KP Sharma Oli took oath as Prime Minister amidst the country's fifth leadership change in as many years. Leading the moderate Communist Party of Nepal, UML, Oli aims to foster stability crucial for economic growth and job creation. His appointment follows the removal of predecessor Pushpa Kamal Dehel, who failed to secure parliamentary confidence after a tumultuous tenure. Nepal, since abolishing its monarchy in 2008, has witnessed frequent shifts in government, now seeing its 14th under Oli's leadership. Take a look. KP Sharma Oli, a seasoned communist leader, was sworn in as Nepal's Prime Minister on 15th July, marking the fifth change in leadership in as many years. His inauguration aims to stabilize Nepal's volatile political landscape, essential for attracting investments and generating employment in the economically challenged Himalayan nation. 
President Ram Chandra Podel administered the oath to Oli, who leads the moderate Communist Party of Nepal. His appointment follows the ousting of his predecessor Pushpa Kamal Dahal, who lost a parliamentary vote of confidence after a tumultuous 20-month tenure. Since abolishing its 239-year-old monarchy in 2008, Nepal has grappled with political instability, witnessing the formation of its 14th government under Oli's leadership. Oli, a former prime minister twice over, secured a majority through a coalition with the centrist Nepali Congress after his party withdrew support from Dahal. Dahal, a former Maoist rebel leader, failed to muster the required 138 votes in the 275-member parliament to stay in power. With 63 lawmakers supporting him, 194 opposing and one abstaining, his bid for confidence was decisively rejected by Parliament Speaker Dev Raj Gimre. Samanya Pradhan Mantri Puswa Kamal Dahal Prachanna Le Pratini Savabata Vishwas Kamat Prapta Garna Rakhna Vaiko Prastap Aswikit Vaiko Ghoshna Garda Chhu. The political instability in Nepal often arises from coalition governments formed with multiple parties, leading to frequent disagreements and shifts in political alliances. Nepal is diverse ethnically, culturally and regionally, which contributes to political fragmentation. Different ethnic groups and regions often have distinct political aspirations and grievances, leading to tensions and instability. Nepal adopted a new constitution in 2015, transitioning from a unitary to a federal system. However, issues related to the implementation of federalism, resource allocation and power sharing between the central and provincial governments have been contentious, contributing to political instability. Time now for Asia this week, the stories from across the continent. Heavy monsoon showers dumped more than 300 mm of rain in South Korea, while warnings went out across a large swath of the country, including the capital. Footage released by the Jeonggi Fire Service showed rescue workers on an inflatable boat evacuating residents from flooded areas in Paju near inter-Korean border. Meanwhile, residents in Seoul expressed worry about climate change causing the recent unpredictable and extreme weather. Although July brings annual monsoon rain, the summer months in recent years have seen weather extremes that President Yoon suk Yeol has said should be anticipated as a result of climate change. Russia and Ukraine exchanged 95 prisoners of war each in the latest such swap after the United Arab Emirates acted as an intermediary. Russia's defense ministry in a statement on the Telegram messaging app said the returning Russian soldiers would be flown to Moscow for medical examinations and physical and psychological rehabilitation. It said the free troops had faced mortal danger in Ukrainian captivity. Ukrainian President Zelensky said that the freed Ukrainian prisoners were members of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, the National Guard and the Border Guard Service. Indian Navy rescued at least nine of the 16-member crew of Pomoro's flagged oil tanker that capsized off Oman on July 15 have been rescued while one was found dead. Those rescued by the Indian Navy's warship INS Teg so far include eight Indians, one Sri Lankan, said a spokesperson of the Indian Navy, which is helping with search and rescue operations. The Prestige Falcon, a 117-meter oil product tanker, was heading to the Yemeni port of Eden. 
In Bangladesh, thousands of job reform protesters clashed with police, resulting in several deaths and many injuries. The clashes were triggered by protests against public sector job quotas, which reserve 30% of jobs for family members of 1971 War of Independence fighters. Police used tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse the students, causing dozens of injuries, including several journalists. A report. Thousands of job reform protesters in Bangladesh clashed with police following violent confrontations that left several people dead and many injured. Police fired tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse students protesting against public sector job quotas, which include a 30% reservation for family members of those who fought in the 1971 War of Independence from Pakistan. The clashes resulted in dozens of injuries, including at least six journalists. The new quota system is intended to honor and support the families of freedom fighters who contributed to the country's liberation. However, it has sparked significant controversy and protests, particularly among students and young job seekers who argue that the quotas are unfair and contribute to high youth unemployment rates. Critics claim that the system disproportionately benefits a specific group and reduces opportunities for the broader population. Nearly 32 million young Bangladeshis out of a total population of 170 million are neither working nor in education. Amid the protests, authorities deployed paramilitary border guard units alongside riot police outside Dhaka University where students chanted, we will not let our brother's blood go in vain. The government of Bangladesh indefinitely closed all schools and universities following clashes that left several people dead. Armed cadres and activists of the ruling Awami League, along with its associated student wings, took to the streets nationwide to counter protesters, demanding the removal of the government job quota system. Brandishing sticks, bats, helmets and even handguns, the cadres labeled the protesters as traitors, leading to confrontations in multiple locations across Dhaka. Protests have intensified after Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina refused to meet the students' demands, citing ongoing court proceedings. Since July 14, her party supporters have gathered and confronted the demonstrators who had blocked major thoroughfares in Dhaka demanding a revision of the government job quota system. Devotees gathered for the Bahuda Yatra in India city of Puri as deities returned to the Jagannath temple marking the conclusion of the sacred festival. The Bahuda Yatra or return car festival is a spectacle of devotion as thousands of devotees come together to pull the chariots of Lord Jagannath, Devi Subhadra and Lord Balbhadra. The deities departed the Jagannath temple on July 7th, travelling to the Gundicha temple, their revered birthplace. After spending a week there, they made their return journey celebrated as the Bahuda Yatra. Take a look. Thousands of devotees gathered to pull the chariots of the sibling deities, Lord Jagannath, Devi Subhadra and Lord Balbhadra during the Bahuda Yatra or the return car festival in Jagannath Puri. The deities had departed from the Jagannath temple on July 7th for the Rath Yatra travelling to the Gundija temple, which is revered as their birthplace. After spending a week at the Gundija temple, the deities made their return journey to the Jagannath temple. This entire pilgrimage is celebrated as the Bahuda Yatra. 
The annual Rath Yatra or the Chariot Festival begins with the Snan Yatra, a bathing ceremony where the deities are bathed with 108 pots of water. Following this, the deities remain in seclusion for about two weeks. Ajasta Purnima me Bhagavan Sri Jagannath Mahaprabhu Ratna Singhasan chhod karke Mahar me Darwaj Mandir ke Prangal me jo Snan Mandap hai is Snan Mandap pe be aakar baith gaye. Kyu na jese jis jati dharm nirvishesh me jo bhi aaye Christian ho Muslimaan ho Bahai ho jo bhi ho kuch ho. सब लोग भगवान को चरम चक्ष में आज दर्शन कर पाएंगे मंदिर बाहर में खड़े होकर ड्यूरिंग द रथ यात्रा लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ लॉर्ड बलभद्र एंड देवी सुभद्रा आर टेकन आउट इन अ ग्रैंड प्रोसेशन ऑन चैरियट्स ओवर 40 फीट हाई ट्रैवलिंग टू द गुंडिजा टेंपल दे स्टे देयर फॉर 9 डेज बिफोर मेकिंग देयर रिटर्न जर्नी known as the Bahuda Yatra, to their main temple in Puri. This tradition, which has been celebrated in India for over 600 years, is the origin of the word Jagannath. The festival attracts thousands of visitors and pilgrims from across the country. The Ratha Yatra or the Card Festival, uh, popularly uh, known in English, is not merely a festival, it is a sentiment. It is not just a sentiment for four and a half crore Odias, but for all Hindus worldwide. Lord of the Universe, Lord Jagannath, he leaves his abode and he visits his devotees. He gives darshan to his devotees on the streets. Lakhs of people come and they, um, they all get together in Puri. Devotees believe that participating in the festival or even witnessing it can cleanse them of their sins and bring spiritual merit. The festival is a profound expression of equality as people from all walks of life, regardless of caste, creed or social status, come together to pull the chariots. This act of collective devotion signifies unity and communal harmony. The Rath Yatra is a vital part of India's cultural heritage. It showcases the rich traditions, rituals and craftsmanship of the region, particularly in the construction and decoration of the massive chariots. Beyond its religious significance, the Rath Yatra is also a time of great celebration featuring music, dance and various cultural performances. It is a vibrant and joyous occasion that brings communities together in celebration. The Rath Yatra holds deep religious and cultural significance in Hinduism. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.